Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here. We're back with a brand new video series and the goal is to teach you guys full stack engineering, build a full stack application and have your resume stand out even more for the job market. So what exactly is full stack engineering? Well, full stack engineering is composed of either an individual or a group or team of developers that can work on both the client and the server side of software. Now, when we talk about the client side, think about the user interface, the actual view that the end users can see and interact with directly. When we talk about the server side, it consists of all of the abstractions that the end user does not see or they don't directly interact with. So for example, when you open up Discord or Facebook, whether it's on browser or if you open up Discord on your desktop or even your mobile phone, everything that you see, which is the view, is the client side. It's an interface that allows the user to interact with such as clicking buttons, typing in text, submitting a form, etc. Now with the client, the user can indirectly communicate with the server side, which is the part of the application that usually handles many different things such as use authentication. So if you have a login system, you want to be able to verify a user's credentials when they enter it in. Maintaining state, so keeping users logged in or remembering all of their items in their shopping cart, for example. Saving their favorite foods or remembering the last restaurant they visited. Now, sometimes in the industry and just in general, really, it can be a heavy load for one person to work on both the front end and the back end. Usually when people refer to client side, they refer to the front end. And likewise, when they refer to the server side, they refer to the back end. Now in practice, teams usually are divided into two or more groups where certain groups will strictly work on the front end, which is the whole user interface, the user experience, design, the rendering of components, and other groups will work on the back end, the server side where They'll handle all of the HTTP requests coming in. They'll manage state by handling sessions, saving new users to a database, authenticating users, and much more. Now, yeah, sure, full stack engineering sounds pretty cool, but how do you actually become a full stack engineer? Now, the very first thing that you should definitely get started with is at least either front end development or back end development. Now, I say that you don't necessarily need to learn either front end or back end in a certain order. You could just start with either one of them and then move over to the next one. But we'll start with front end development first. So what exactly is front end development? Well, as previously mentioned, it's the development of the front end application or the client side of things. It's what the end users, the customers of your product will be seeing and interacting with. Like mentioned, think of any application either on your mobile device or on the browser. Every button, every scroll view, sidebar, navigation bar, icon, etc. These are all things that a front end engineer would be working on. So what exactly does a front end developer need to know? And it's straight to say because the field of web development is always growing and there are always new technologies that are being introduced. But I can safely say, and so can many other people, that the starting point to front end development is understanding the bare bones, the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And those are the core concepts that you need to make sure that you have under your belt before you take on any other project. And we'll talk a little bit more about HTML and CSS and JavaScript later on in the actual introductory videos. You'll also need to make sure you understand HTTP requests. So quite often as a front end developer, you will be needing to interact with some kind of API. Well, you're not always going to be working on design parts and navigation bars and divs and all that kind of stuff. That's the misinterpretation that a lot of people seem to have with front end developers. They don't necessarily just work on you know the design portion of things or how you know a div should go inside another div they also work on other logical things on the front end side as well you need to be able to understand api calls and communicate with the back end you need to know how front end frameworks will work such as react angular or Vue. one of these three not all of them but if you have more knowledge with more frameworks and that's good but the important part is is having an actual project on your resume so that way you don't just say that you know this technology you actually can prove that you know this technology because you've worked on the project and then there's also so front end logic, so for example, protecting certain routes, filtering certain routes from a user. So let's say if they're not logged in, then you don't want them to be able to view that route. All right, so let's talk about back end development now. So what exactly is a backend developer? What did it do? What is backend development in general? And backend development just all pertains to the server side of things. Everything that has to do with handling requests sent from the browser or client, interacting with database, external APIs, or even the operating system really. And backend developers often need to worry about saving, managing the state of a user. So like I was mentioning earlier, say if you have an application such as a shopping website where people can add items to their cart. A lot of applications tend to remember the items that the user had added to their cart. And all this data is actually typically saved on the client side. But what you do usually is you send that data to the server side and then you save it on there. 
so both the server and the frontend actually have the information. Backend developers are also responsible for saving new registered users to the database, as well as verifying revisiting users by validating their credentials and then sending them the correct data that they are authorized to see. And backend developers may also be responsible for scheduling jobs on the server side for the operating system. They may need to also handle caching, encryption of sensitive information, and many more. And obviously, there's a whole bunch of things that backend developers do, likewise with frontend developers. I can't mention them all in this video. I can only give you just a general idea of some things that you will be doing later on in these video series. For example, we are going to be implementing a full stack application that's going to have user authentication and authorization. And we're also going to make sure that we're hashing and encrypting certain sensitive data and a bunch of other cool things. All right. So now what does a backend developer need to know? Now at a basic level, a backend developer should have a strong understanding of HTTP requests. So like I was saying earlier, as a front end developer, you need to know how to make those HTTP requests. As a back end developer, you need to also know how to both make and receive requests, HTTP requests. The reason why I say both is because as a back end developer, you will be hitting external APIs. You'll, be, you'll probably need to work with the Weather API, Google API, Spotify API at some point, maybe. You never know, depending on what application you're making. You'll also need to have an understanding of cookies and sessions. So you can think of cookies as a unique identifier that identifies certain information on the browser side of things. So for example, whenever you log into Facebook, you're going to receive a cookie. That cookie is sent to the server with every single request that you make. And the server takes that cookie, it validates it. It ensures that that cookie corresponds to your user account. And if it is correct, it's going to send you the correct information. There's also authentication and authorization. So there's also OAuth too, but that's not really required, but it is optional and can be a bonus. But authentication is the process of validating users' credentials. So when you type in your username and password, if you type in the wrong one, the server is going to say, hey, look, you typed in the wrong password. Please try again. Authorization refers to the process of protecting certain resources that can only be viewed by specific users. And there's also databases. You can't go wrong with either MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, Couchbase, etc. And for the record, GraphQL is not a database in case if you're wondering. Now notice how I didn't mention a specific framework or a language. The truth is the language that you learn to practice these concepts may not always be the language that you will use in the industry. So it's very important to stress that you should focus on understanding the concepts over how things are done rather than the language itself. And to name some common languages and frameworks that are popular in the industry for back development, there's obviously JavaScript and Node.js. And with the frameworks, there's Express and Nest. There's Python, Flask, and Django. There's Go, Revel, Jin, Bigo. We never really used Go before, but Go itself is definitely a popular language. There's Java. Spring Boot is the very first framework that comes to mind. And then C Sharp, .NET. Again, these are very, very, very common for these languages. Now, for this whole series, we will be using JavaScript for both the front and the back end. And we will first start with all the basics of HTML and CSS, and then we'll dive a little bit into client side JavaScript. Once we're done with that, we're going to learn about HTTP requests, and then we're going to use them to retrieve data from APIs. And we'll briefly talk about APIs, what they are, and why they're so important. That itself should conclude the front end part of this series. And then we'll be able to move on to back end development and learn about how to handle API requests. We'll learn about how to authenticate users given their credentials. And we'll also learn how to authorize and protect routes so we can display certain pages to certain users. And then we're also going to need to work with some databases, so we'll go over that as well. But ultimately, the whole goal of this entire series is just to cover full stack engineering and talk about what it is. So I hope that you guys are excited, that you guys are ready to dive into a brand new field of software development. And I'm super excited, and let's go ahead and get started.